Eureka! I'm a personal trainer and vegan nutritionist on a mission to show the world the amazing power of vegan whole foods, both in terms of sports performance and the prevention, treatment and even reversal of chronic disease. But I haven't always been vegan, far from it. As little as five years ago, I was probably eating more animal products than anyone else you've ever met. I was in such a rush to pack muscle on that in the end I was consuming 500 grams of animal protein every single day. I would eat my way through a 10 kilogram box of chicken breasts and guzzle down 42 pints of milk every week. I'd cram in lots of tuna and eggs and the odd steak and wash it all down with copious amounts of whey protein. I've been sold a lie. I mistakenly believed that we need meat for protein milk for calcium, and fish oils for omega-3. Since then, I've learned the truth. Virtually every single essential nutrient in animal products originates from plants. Take protein, for example. I like to break it down like this. Meat is muscle, and it's made out of plant protein. Whether that animal ate the plants directly, or ate another animal that ate those plants. That's where it all comes from. Whether we choose to ingest protein from animal products or the original plant source, our digestive system breaks it down into its constituent amino acids before it enters our bodies through the wall of the small intestine. From there, we take these building blocks and shape them into whichever proteins we require so in terms of muscle growth, the source of amino acids is completely irrelevant. However, to eat meat for protein is akin to eating mud because we're after the water. What we don't want is all the excess baggage. Cholesterol, trans fats, sac fats, natural and artificial hormones, antibiotics. The sad fact is, the majority of our friends and family members will die at their own hands because of what they choose to put in their mouth. Now, naysayers will tell you that a vegan diet cannot be natural for humans because it lacks two essential nutrients. Well, in warmer climates, such as the tropics, where we evolved our physiology, we can produce all the vitamin D we need from the action of the sun. And prior to the age of industrialization, our soils and drinking water were teeming with vitamin B12. Times have changed. Many now need to take advantage of a supplement, but it's not just vegans. The majority of B12 found in animal products is only there because farmed animals are given it in supplemental form. And your average omnivorous eater typically consumes a mere 130 IUs of vitamin D per day. Most health authorities are now in agreement. The number we should be targeting is 2,000. Okay, now some interesting stats. Did you know that on average, vegetables contain 16 times the amount of nutrients versus meat? If we look at that on a cost basis, vegetables then come out at 48 times more nutritious and the anti-cancer, anti-aging, antioxidant nutrients are 64 times more prevalent in plant foods versus animal products. So now tell me, who's more likely to be nutrient deficient? <coughs> Since my progression to veganism, I've more than doubled the strength of my eyesight. I've cured my hay fever and the chronic tendonitis that would plague me from all my heavy weightlifting and bag punching. It's been nothing but a boost. <laughs> so my performance in the gym. My clients have had success at reversing type 2 diabetes, liver disease and depression, among other ills. 
Uh, the Norwich City Football Club captain, Ross Martin, cured his long-standing ulcerative colitis after following my advice. I've had the honour to speak about veganism multiple times on TV and radio, including the BBC's World Service. Somewhat mischievously, the interviewer asked me if vegan and meat-eating bodybuilders are forced to compete separately. No, I replied, which I think is unfair on the meat-eaters. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't me being sarcastic. I, I stand by that remark. There are so few vegans in the world, relatively speaking, but there were already so many world-class vegan strength athletes. Kendrick Farris was the only American to qualify for the last Olympics to compete in weightlifting, where he set a new record for his country. <coughs> Patrick Baboumian has broken three world records in strongman. The most prestigious bodybuilding federation, the IFBB, is now home to two vegan pro bodybuilders. Nimai Delgado has never eaten meat in his life, and Jahina Malik, guess what? She's been vegan since birth. My old training partner, not to name drop or anything, but the then reigning Mr. Universe, Barney Duplessis, he told me of several health and performance benefits when he switched over to veganism. While we were on the set of upcoming movie The Game Changers, he inspired bodybuilder Carl Bruder to give veganism a try. The producers then paid Barney to write Carl a vegan nutrition plan, and Carl went on to win gold at his next competition, which you'll be able to see documented in the film. The Game Changers crew have been all over the world, filming all the top vegan athletes, world-leading scientists, and they even found some special ops soldiers that are fed a vegan diet. This film is set to blow the lid on how not only is this way of eating viable for athletes, it is, in fact, optimal. The highly alkalizing, nutrient-rich food means that the vegan athlete will enjoy better energy and faster recovery between workouts. Intestinal contents will be lighter. The transit time of whole plant foods through the human body is a mere 12 to 16 hours. Omnivorous eaters can feel like they're passing stool regularly, but are generally in fact running four to five days late due to the lack of fibre in their diets. Is that running around? Naughty. <laughs> when humans, watching you, when humans choose to eat animal products, glutamine is pulled from our muscles to buffer, to buffer sorry, the resulting acid in the blood. In a younger person with that higher testosterone, this is of little consequence, but into middle age, as testosterone diminishes, it can no longer offset the damage, and so gains start to slow down. And then into older age, we see accelerated muscle loss. A favourable body composition is more easily achieved on a vegan diet too. The broad study out of New Zealand earlier this year showed that people eating unrestricted amounts of whole plant foods lost on average one pound of excess body fat per week. At the same time their blood pressure, cholesterol and triglycerides all came down to within the healthy range. The reason for the fat loss is that by filling up on only whole plant foods, a large percentage of our stomach is occupied by water and fibre, both of which are zero calories. And because the food is so nutritionally dense, the brain signals satiety. Have you ever noticed how it's possible to eat loads and loads of junk food only to feel hungry again a short time later? The brain knows that we need nutrients on board, and so it sends a signal to the body to keep eating. Some of the greatest advancements into nutritional science of late have involved the microbiome and also epigenetics. We understand that the 5,000 odd different strains of bacteria that can, can inhabit our colon would create different enterotypes or gut environments. We are either Prevotella or Bacteroides dominant. Beneficial Prevotella strains feed on the fibre from whole plant foods and resistant starch found in legumes. This fermentation process creates short-chain fatty acids that produce wonderful health benefits 
where they interact inside our bodies. One of these fatty acids, butyrate, actually feeds the cells of the colon wall, helping them knit tightly together. This keeps out pathogens and protects against the, de the development of food allergies and autoimmune disease by not allowing in proteins that have not been fully digested. <coughs> the bacteroidae strains feed on things like animal protein and fats. They can produce no healthful compounds, only toxins. Two of these, putrescine and cadaverine, have been indicated in depression and anxiety disorders. In terms of epigenetics, the aforementioned butyrate does one more thing for the benefit of those colonic mucosal cells. It can actually rewrite their very DNA, making us more resilient to cancer. On the other side of the coin, the putrefaction of animal protein residues in the colon produces a mutagen known as Cresol. <coughs> Cresol irreparably damages the DNA of highly specialized, very important cells in our central nervous system, which are known as oligodendrocytes. This can lead to depression and ultimately, sadly, dementia. The more I learn about nutrition, the more and more glaringly obvious it is to me that a whole foods vegan diet is the optimal diet for human health and athletic performance. Mark my words, the day will come when the majority of sporting champions will be vegan. Thank you. I know just open up to a QA until we all get bored. And then, uh, just do what you want, isn't it? Anyone got any questions? Health, fitness? Hello? You said you turned vegan a couple years ago. Yeah. What was that for the What actually? It was really seeing the data on. Um, a lot of it was free reading the China study book. And it showed how the more animal products we eat, the quicker we get the diseases of affluence and cancer, heart disease. Um, this one particular graph in there had um, affluent countries to poor countries. The green lines were a percentage of whole plant foods. So on the poor countries, it was nearly 100%, down to like America and places was 6% or something. Um, and the red lines were percentage of deaths from cancer, heart disease, and it was an inverse relationship. And you know, I just said how much animal product. I, I've not met anyone who ate more animal products than I did at the time, and I thought. You know, I don't mind dying, but I don't want to be, I don't want it to be my fault, you know. <coughs> yeah, I saw my partner, my partner went vegan first. She not reversed her autoimmune thyroid disease, but she kind of got 90% better from it, despite the whole part. And I saw how well she was, and, I, and she just showed me all this data, and she looked frightened and said, you need to change. Mm. And then I looked at all the data, and then I thought, yeah, that's, I was scared as well, you know. Um, and all I noticed when I changed my diet, it just boosted everything. My tendonitis cleared up, more energy, quicker recovery, more positive, just amazing. But so what I really advocate is not a vegan diet because vegan tells me what you're not eating. I advocate whole plant foods. So base your meals around a legume, a whole grain, lots of veg, little nuts and seeds, a little bit of fruit, all the herbs and spices. And really, you know, the, the doctors in America who promote this say probably 80% of the reasons that we die probably unnecessary, you know, mostly down to nutrition. Mm. Hello. Hello. Um, these um, make free substitutes, such as soya chicken, yeah. and the mints, are they okay? Are they they're better than what they're displacing, right. but they're going to be stripped of a lot of the nutrition. Uh, and if they've got oils added, oils are particularly unhealthy. So really, it's getting, they're, they're an okay, they're okay as a transition thing if we're used to eating animal products, but I say is as soon as possible, try to transition more into the whole plant foods. If you want to be really, if you just want to stop hurting the poor animals, then, you know, brilliant. You know, but if you want to do... Say again? Yeah. Yeah. I like mushrooms. They have that kind of umami kind of flavour, like, like meat does, so yeah. And mushrooms, they have, um, there's an antioxidant amino acid called ergothionine, and it's one of the few intramitochondrial antioxidants, so it gets into the little motors of our cells, 
and as oxidative stress. The mitochondrial theory of aging says that's why that's kind of death is decay. Like as they get damaged, the cells die out, we die out. It actually undoes that. So that's a re that's really the reason why I eat mushrooms on the daily. But yeah, they would be a good. I think if you I grill them, I grill them on the George Foreman, yeah. and yeah, you do get that kind of almost meaty taste. But it's not so much like meat that it grosses me out. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Hello. Replace milk with the calcium. Please. Okay, so what? Where does the calcium come from? Do we think in milk? It's the green, it's the grass. So it's long, thin leaves. So we just need to eat whole plant foods. Um, greens are particularly good, but um, most whole plant foods, even oranges, are a pretty good calcium source. Believe it or not, a lot of the dried fruits. Um, a really good idea when you first start to change your diet and you want to eat well. Chronometer app, C R O N O M E T E R, chronometer. Um, and you plug in what you're eating, and it tells you calories, macronutrients, micronutrients, and you can see for yourself, am I hitting my RDA? But if you're basing your food around whole plant foods and you're eating a calorically adequate amount, you'd be hard pressed not to hit all your, all your micros. And yeah, you're welcome. Cool. Should, should we be having any oils, you know, like plant oils and olive oil? And so, yeah, the, the doctors who I follow really don't promote them, particularly coconut oil, which raises our LDL cholesterol, which um, the American College of Cardiology says is the only critical risk factor for heart disease. Um, coconut oil raises our LDL worse than tallow, worse than beef fat. It's not quite as bad as butter, but it's worse than beef fat, which we know gives us heart disease. So, um, although it's kind of promoted as a healthy thing, you know, uh, any oils paralyze our endothelial function, so our blood vessels get kind of crippled within about two or three hours after, even like, I don't know, extra virgin olive oil, whichever ones. Um, there's so many reasons that oils are, are bad. They tend to be skewed very much in favor of omega-6, which is pro-inflammatory. We really want, as vegans, roughly equal three and six. Oh, there's a million and, and, and one things. Um, it's probably going rancid by the time you get it. It's kind of what white sugar is to fruit, you know, in terms of, okay, it kind of came from there, but actually it's isolated, it's really nasty, you know, for our health, and an oil is kind of the same way. And I always look to nature and the naturally attainable quantities. In nature, there's no jugs of oil, there's no bags of shelled nuts. If you want to get a nut out of a shell, then you've not got any tools, you know, it's, well, you probably get a rock, away. but you're going to be so long to, whereas if you're, if you're aware we evolved in the tropics with abundance of, you know, fresh the tropical cool fruits, we can dig up tubers, we can try and get an animal, but they tend to run off because they don't want to be eaten. So what we're left with, you know, high carb, whole plant foods. We do need a little nuts and seeds because we need the six and three to help us avoid, uh, absorb some of the carotenoids and vitamin K from your veggies and things. But yeah, I think we should be eating mostly. What would you cook with then? Water. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, steam fry, um, boil, casseroles, um, steam. Microwave, supposedly, which I avoided for years because I heard all the bro science, but apparently microwaves actually retain much more antioxidants in a lot of circumstances than any other cooking method. So, yeah, no problem. I've probably forgot half of it because I'm under pressure, but there is so many things detrimental to oil. If you go on YouTube and you type in oil, colon, the vegan killer, uh, Mike the Vegan did a really good summary of all the, the things. Oh yeah, that's one other thing. When we when we heat oils, we destroy the omega-3. Whereas when we heat flax chia seeds, it, it retains the omega-3. So that's another thing to consider. There was a young lady. Yeah. Um, in your experience, would you advocate um, vegan uh, cosmetics and things? Like, do, you, do you get nutrients like through the skin, so therefore like vegan uh, moisturizers are generally better than not non vegan do you know? I've never even thought about this. That's a good question. I'm not too sure because the people who I follow say not to have coconut oil, but they do use it topically. So I'm thinking, well, are you absorbing the long chain saturates? And yeah, that's a good question. I would think possibly, but uh, I'm no expert on I don't often use a lot of cosmetics. <laughs> <laughs> I swear. <laughs> Yeah, good, I'm going to look into that. Actually, that's a really good question.
Hello. Hello. Where did you get B, vitamin B12? You mentioned earlier on about B12. Yeah, so it used to be in, in our drinking water basically and in, in our soils, but now with modern agriculture, with the age of sterilization, it comes from bacteria, so we're killing off the bacteria. Uh -huh. And so now, you know, we're not in the same environment which we evolved our physiology in. Mm -hmm. So that's my argument. So really, um, they say a thousand micrograms Sorry, two and a half thousand micrograms a week of cyanocobalamin, which is the sort of original B12, which all the data is on, and we know that definitely works. Mm -hmm. A week over the age of about 60, they then say maybe more like 7,000 so micrograms that, is a, a week. supplement. Then? But it has to be a supplement, really. It, you know, some things are fortified with it, yeah. so you'd have to calculate that up. But it's probably such a small amount. I think, like, um, nutritionally, you need about eight tablespoons, so... Mm -hmm. Um, there's the other versions, hydroxylcobalamin, uh, methylcobalamin. There's not a lot of data on it. The data we do have is usually from the people who manufacture it. Yeah. And they're saying, oh, this is amazing, it's much better. But in actual fact, one time uh, in one study there, methylcobalamin, the guy didn't absorb it at all. Uh -huh. So I say if it's not broke, don't fix it. And it's cheaper anyway. Yeah. So, yeah, so you start. Yeah. You're okay. Anyone else before we wrap up? I don't know if there's B12 in mineral water. Yeah, but that'll be from us. Again, I don't. Even, <laughs> I don't normally get so caught out, but yeah, I'm not really too sure. But I think if there was B12, there might be bacteria in there. But anyway, it would be such small amounts, I would have thought. Yeah. I've not heard about this. I'm going to, I'm going to say probably not. I think, I think we all know about it. Say again? It's from animal waste. Yeah. That I would necessarily encourage to do Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Great for thought. Anyone else? How would you recommend us to follow to find out more? I like the Hench Herbivore YouTube channel. <laughs> that guy's <is> amazing. <laughs> um, <laughs> and I know it's normally rude to be on your phones when someone's talking, but do hit that red subscribe button. But um, uh, nutritionfacts.org. Yeah. So that's a, a website and a, and a YouTube. Uh, really, I mean, I look, I look at some other authors, but that those people... They've got no agenda. They really, they look at all the available science, all the English language nutrition papers that come out, they look at every single one. It's about 25,000 a year. And they look, who's, who funded it, first of all? Uh, was it good science? What should we do about it? And you know, they're not trying to sell you anything. They're just telling us what's best for our health. And, and again, just time after time, is whole plant foods, none of the other foods. There's like a thousand odd videos on there. No, 5,000, I think. Yeah, really good resource. Brilliant, thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Hi, lovely. Can I just ask you, um, in your sort of work, can you do? Yeah. Because when you come from the you've got a bar and plant. Yeah. Does a vegan have any change in the Yeah. Osteoarthritis is usually helped pretty quickly because it's very pro inflammatory. So, and most vegan whole foods are anti inflammatory. So normally people get a lot of relief very quickly and it, and it does build. I had one client actually with osteoarthritis um, and in fact we didn't really know till fairly recently but there is a pro-inflammatory aspect to that. Um, and also, I mean my client, he was just so much, he, he was really unfunctional when he came to me. He had replaced with knees like a few months back uh, and he went whole plant, he really did it properly um, and he ended up squatting 250 kilos with five sets of 10 on these knees. You know, so exercise is important, so strengthening and stretching, you know, but you obviously you just have to do what you're able to and be you know, a bit conservative with it, but that really helps. But yeah, a lot of degenerative disease is just a lack of nutrition. And so, and, and more and more we're finding a lot of diseases seem to be driven by atherosclerosis. So, you know, it's the number one killer of Westerners is coronary artery disease. But actually, they're the last things to get through the arteries. So much before that, the little capillaries. So, you know, they feed our intervertebral discs. So if they're getting blocked, we're not getting nutrients to our spine. And, 
you know. But this is the only nutrition in the world, and it's clinically proven. There's uh, angiogram evidence that we can reverse atherosclerosis just by eating whole plant foods. Um, yeah, Dr. Caldwell Esselstyn brought out, brought out a case series of three years back, showing 200 odd people that had done so. And then all of a sudden, you get nutrients um, into, you know, to, to your bones and things. So, yeah. I, I, I think you definitely get at least some benefit. Yeah, you're welcome. Anyone else, or shall we go and have a laugh? <laughs> <laughs> Let's finish it there. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you.